Hey everyone, Ariel Adams here with the blog to watch. Please subscribe to our videos on YouTube and like this video if you find it useful. This is a review of the Carl F. Bucherer Monero Flyback. There are a few watches in the collection that kind of look like this. There was an earlier uh, chronograph flyback, but this is the latest uh, Monero chronograph flyback. This is the version that's my favorite color with the what they call bluish gray dial and this nice matching Boy, I'm trying to think of the correct color. It's not quite gray. It's not quite light brown or brown. There's a little, it's like a brownish gray alligator. It's actually quite nice. And this combination, I think, looks pretty handsome. Now, will you agree or disagree that this watch is as, according to Carl F. Bucherer's website, stylishly fast and furious? Um, apparently this watch is based upon early 1970s era racing um okay and that is yeah i can see that i look a lot of the sport watches from that era just look like dress watches today or they just look weird so it either went like more formal and a little bit more elegant or why do we need all that yellow and orange on the dial and that's kind of from the 1970s the movement is the cfb 1970 uh, pretty decent looking. So again, this is a flyback by Comprex chronograph with a column wheel. This is a base Swiss Salita SW500, which has been modified uh, apparently exclusively for Carl F. Bucherer. The modifications include um, a, a range of little things, but again, the column wheel uh, system for the chronograph is one of them, um, as well as the flyback functionality. If you don't know what a flyback function is, it's very, very simple. When you have a chronograph, normally, I just started here, if you want to reset it, you would have to stop it first, and then you have to reset it. On a flyback chronograph, the system is just a little bit different. So rather than having to stop it first, I can just immediately reset it and start again. If you are in the habit of using a mechanical chronograph on a regular basis, flyback, it's definitely useful. Um, I think a lot of people use these kind of for fun. So it's cool if you really into flyback, it's, it's a neat feature to have. Um, is it the type of thing that you should go out there and look to spend a bunch more money on? Probably not, but all things equal, flyback is going to be more interesting and fun than a chronograph with a non-flyback. Case is steel. It also comes in gold, 43 millimeters wide, water resistance of 30 meters, sapphire crystal, and a relatively attractive dial. One of the things that is a little bit of an issue for me is legibility. If you look at the dial, there's a clear emphasis on the chronograph hands, the chronograph seconds hand and the chronograph minute hand, as well as the running seconds hand, um, are white. And there's a great level of high contrast. These are, for all intents and purposes, really good hands. I wish I could say the exact same thing about the hour and minute hand. Now, you can see them. And they are a very elegant shape. They're a Dauphine, Dauphine shape that have a cut in the middle, which makes them skeletonized. But because they're polished on a polished surface, guess what happens? It could be worse, but they're definitely, they definitely blend in a little bit. So what could the brand have done to make this better? Well, I get that they wanted to match to the hour markers, but what they could have done is take a white strip and fill it in that skeletonized element so that that white matches everything else and they would be a lot more legible and if they wanted to, they could put a little bit of white on part or all of the uh, polished hour markers. That would have really fixed this um, a lot for me. Again, this is not a bad watch. It's nice. But that legibility issue, the hands are crisp. They're very attractive. They're nice. I like the shape of them. They're the right size. But you do see how an all polished hand, even if it's, a, if it's a relatively flat polished hand like that, can cause issues. So again, not the biggest thing in the world, but it's something that of course I look at because I'm interested in, in very effective hands. I think that's kind of a big deal. Um, Got to get the strap on here. It's one of these weird straps. It has, well, let me just show you here. It's once you get it, it's fine. But so this is meant to replicate the look of a normal buckle, but it's not a normal buckle because you have this deployment system here, right? And it also has this little pin. So normally, that little pin would go in and you'd, you'd be done. But there's also this little buckle here. But the problem is, is it's, it's very unclear exactly where it goes in here, right? Because you can't put 
this little tongue in the the longest hole because you need to save it for that one. So there I have it in there, but it can be a little tricky to do. So let's put this on again. This is 43 millimeters wide. This wears like a large 43 millimeters. I have 43 millimeter watches that don't, oh, back in focus, don't look as big as this one. I think it's because these lugs are like really long. Now a good question is why are these lugs so long? Well, um, they're, they, they slope down, which is good, which makes the watch wear comfortably. And this nice padded alligator strap is, it's, it's a great strap. It really is a very, very nice strap. But a lot, what happens a lot is these watches, because they're retro inspired, they take a case that was smaller a long time ago and then they blew it up. But oftentimes they keep the proportions or it's not that, it's not as different as it should be. So there's this nice look of a case, but given the fact that the lugs are as big as they are, they're gonna go pretty far. If you have medium to large wrists, don't worry about it. If you have smaller wrists like me, then you're gonna to have to make the decision of whether or not this case is too big for you. The case is, is, has a nice um, brushing technique here, which I like. Most of the sides of the case here, it's all polished. And along the flanks here on the top part is a very attractive brushing finishing that I actually think is, is, is nicely done. So this is overall a pretty well re refined piece. It has an exclusive movement that I don't think you can find anywhere out of the Monero flyback collection uh, by Carla Bucarer. Again, it's, a, it's apparently a, a collaboration with Salida um, as a modified version of the SW500, which is a, like I said here, it's a four hertz, approximately two day power reserve uh, movement. 30 minute chronographs, the one is just here, obviously going to be the running seconds. I feel that 30 minute chronographs sometimes are quite limiting. Of course, you get a nice attractive look on the dial, but that just seems like a limited amount of time. I mean, even for parking meters, I always, I always gauge things on parking meters and washing machines. And parking meters and washing machines typically have a longer than 30 minute cycle, right? So these days, that's something that I use chronographs a lot for is measuring, uh, especially like a rotating you know, timing bezel, like on a diving watch, that's 60 minutes. So if that thing offers more functionality than this, this is going to be for people that are doing things obviously under uh, 30 minutes. If you're racing, then okay, you know, you're racing around a track and you still want to use a mechanical watch and you want to be stylish, I'm sorry, stylishly fast and furious, then yes, you can wear this and do that. But um, I don't know that a lot of people that are actually racing or using mechanical chronographs. But if you are a Carla Pucara man, then you too can, uh, you, you can do that. Price for the Carla Pucara Monero flyback is 8,700 bucks. So it's up there, but it's a it's a nice brand and the quality is there. Ref small refinement issues aside, this is a pretty cool timepiece if you like something that is a little bit more classically oriented, but has sort of a modern size and heft to it. And these colors are very attractive. You can see the full review on a blog to watch. Thank you.